Hey everyone, it's Warren here from Overexposed 360 again. I know if I've only just pulled up a video showing how to edit 360 photos with Affinity Photo, just at the same time that Photoshop is about to update to its 2018 version with its own 360 tools for editing photos. In that video, I mentioned that Affinity Photo have had these features for close to over a year now, and on the surface, it looks like Photoshop have simply matched Affinity Photo features and doesn't appear to have anything new to offer. So now, after having a bit of time using Photoshop CC 2018, I have to face up to everyone here and eat my words as Photoshop have definitely pushed in front of Affinity Photo in its 360 editing tools. The biggest improvement that Photoshop have made and a definite weakness that everyone have identified in the 360 tools in Affinity Photos is the ability of complete non-destructive editing in the 360 projection. When I first saw the 360 tools in Photoshop, it definitely looks like what a copy of Affinity Photo offers. What I didn't see, even though I was hoping for it, was layer support for 360 editing. This is definitely a game changer for 360 editing as it makes 360 editing workflow infinitely better. I no longer have to keep multiple copies of the same files to manage my changes. I can turn on or off certain filters or edited layers to see how those impact the final 360 image. Basically, everything that is great about having layers in editing your standard photos, you now have the same ability in 360 editing in Photoshop CC 2018. So first, we'll just open up a standard 360 echo rectangular image. So here, I've got a photo I've taken recently at Fort Denison, Sydney, and we'll use this for our 360 editing. So in order to view this photo in 360 within Photoshop, we're going to go up to the top menu and click on 3D, and then Spherical Panorama, and then New Panorama Layer from Selected Layers. So this might take a little while, depending on your specs on your machine and it will come back with your 3D 360 projection. So you can scroll around like you would with any 360 images. You can look up, look down, and it's relatively smooth. But so far, it looks pretty much like what you expect and pretty similar to Affinity Photo. So you can edit directly onto this 360 projection, or if you create a new layer, in order for it to merge into the 360 projection, you need to merge down into this layer. But where Photoshop 2018 differs is that it allows you to merge down into its own separate layer and therefore giving you non-destructive editing. So let's see how Photoshop allows you to do this. Let's have a look at the layer itself. As you can see there, it shows that the projection is in the spherical map. And what you can do there is you can double click on the spherical map and will open up into its own separate file, which will show you the original echo rectangular image. So what you need to take note of is that these two images are actually linked to each other. And I can demonstrate that by creating a new layer here. And I'll just do a quick edit. I'll just color in the sun red, for example. And if I go back to the 360 projection image, and I'll scroll up once it's actually ready, you see that this file also have the edit that I made in the other file. So as you would expect, if I go back to the echo rectangular file and take that layer off and turn it off, and when, if we come back to this 360 image, it will reload and the changes we've made is gone. So basically we have this non-destructive workflow. So any changes in the 360 projection will also apply to the layer that is selected in the echo rectangular file. So what we'll do next is create a blank layer in this echo rectangular file. And the reason why we do this is that any edit we do in the 360 projection will apply to the layer that is selected within this echo rectangular file. So if we go back to the 360 view and find where I'm holding the tripod and the camera. So what I'll do now, I'll just clone myself out and let's see what happens. Okay, so that looks pretty good except for that little dot. So let's fix that up now. So now that looks yeah, that looks good. So let's go back to the accurate rectangular file and see what happens in there with the layers. So you can see here, the layer that we created before is still selected. And if we deselect it, you'll see the changes that we've made are gone. And more importantly, if we only show this layer, you can see the changes is only applied to this layer. And this is important for those who do video work. You want to export this layer with the transparent background. You can layer it over your video to mask over your tripod. Okay, next what we'll do, we'll go back to the 360 view. And let's just say that we want to add a text layer to this view. Um, let's scroll around, maybe at the brickwork there. We just want to add in a new layer saying Fort Denison, because that's what this image was taken. So actually what we should do first is create a new layer in the echo rectangular image because this is a new layer that we'll be working with. So once we've done that, let's go back to the 360 image and let's scroll around until we get a nice flat perspective in this 360 image. So we can just put the word Fort Denison, we'll type it in as a new layer in this 360 image file 
and we'll put it kind of right there where the brickwork is so it just looks like it's part of the brickwork and once we're happy with it what we do we have to merge down into the lower layer so we'll actually merge down into the layer within the aqua rectangular file so let me just go around to show you that this is just a layer on top of the 360 projection so let's move it back to the position that we wanted and to merge down you press command e on the keyboard and this should merge down to the layer that we selected in the echo rectangular file so let's go into the echo rectangular file and let's check so is the layer if we turn it off turn it back on you can see that is on its own layer that's merged down so one thing you should take note is that with any text or i suppose effector layers in the 360 image once you merge down it becomes a rasterized layer and i suppose that makes sense because you can't really change the text here because the perspective is completely different now so all the angles and curves are different okay so i think this looks pretty good overall so the other thing that people normally do with their standard photos or images is they probably put some curves in just add some contrast um, you can do some hdr type work where you can darken the skies a little bit you can lighten the foreground as you can see there's a tower and that tower is actually quite dark there so what we probably want to do is want to brighten that up so it, you can see some of the details so the main issue of using curves with a 360 image is it often create an ugly stitch line between the left and right hand side of an image so i'm just going to show you quickly how i would go about editing that out using the 360 image after i've done all the curves so first we'll create a curves layer and we'll drag it down so we'll darken the image itself so this is so that we can get the sky a little bit darker um so okay let me just turn off the layer with the red sun because we don't really want that and we add a layer mask it, and now we can start paint to darken it appropriately so it's not too exaggerated but give it more definition and give it a more dramatic effect so let me quickly just do that okay i'll darken the grass area there a little bit and okay i think that looks pretty good okay next now i'll create another curves layer and i'll drag it up this time so that i'll brighten the image and the main purpose of this is to brighten this tower again let me quickly do this and brighten it and we'll see what the final images look like Okay, so I think that now looks pretty good. So one last thing that I normally do with my images is I'll create another curves layer and I'll put it as a soft light and I'll lower the opacity a little bit. And the purpose of this layer is just to give the image a little bit more contrast. Now as you can see, the image kind of pops out a little bit. I'll lower the opacity a little bit so that it's not too strong and too striking. And let's have a look at the overall image. I think that looks pretty good. So we can have a quick look at the before and after editing of the image you can definitely see an improvement in this image so even though it looks pretty good in this echo rectangular format the issue that we'll have is because we used the mask and didn't apply the increase and decrease in exposure evenly across the whole image this will often cause a visible stitch line on the left and right hand side of this image where this image are joined together so if we have a look at the 360 projection and we scroll around to see where the left and right hand side of the image is as you can see there if i just zoom in a little bit you can see it doesn't look too bad here but you can see that stitch line you can see the join line because the exposure are not evenly applied across on both that left and right hand side of that aqua rectangular image so what we can do here is simply use a clone stamp and clone down that line and try to even it out and match it and smooth it all the way through one thing i didn't mention before right before we came back to the 360 projection was that i created a new layer in the aqua rectangular file and again the reason for that is so that any edits we do now in this 360 projection will go only onto this little layer so basically i could have selected another existing layer that we've created and any edit will go onto the selected layer in the aqua rectangular file so you can see once we actually clone down that line it evens out and sort of gradually cross between the line and it looks a lot better so i won't actually go through and do the whole line but you can see what i'm trying to do there so it allows you to clone and touch up any issues you may have with the stitch line in the 360 projection into a separate layer in the aqua rectangular format so that's pretty much all the edit we'll do with this file so let's have a quick look around and actually let's go back to the aqua rectangular file and have a look at what's all the edits in there so we've got a multiple layers in there that we've created so if we just look at this new layer as you can see only the edges of this layer is impacted as this layer was solely designed to clean up the join lines so as you can see every single layer every single change that we've made so far to this file is kept in a separate layer and this is how photoshop allow you to have complete non-destructive workflow for your 360 images which is actually quite impressive and this is a big step forward for 360 workflows for all of us budding 360 photographers 
photographers and videographers. And once we're happy with this final image, we can export it out and view it in our 360 view. So let's export this image out from our 360 projection. So the easiest way to do that is go back to the 3D menu, go to Spherical Panorama, and there you go, you can export the panorama from here. And there you have it. And here's a quick comparison of the before edit and after edit of the panorama in 360 view. So hopefully this video have helped shown you how Photoshop 2018 have allowed us to do complete non-destructive editing on 360 panoramas. So this is definitely a game changer and it's fantastic that Photoshop have up its ante on 360 editing. Oh, and before I forget, I've mentioned earlier how the ability to edit 360 images in separate layers is important for video work. And I'll show you quickly what I mean now. So here I actually got an image which is from a screen capture from a 360 video. So I just output it in the highest resolution format so it matches the video size and from here I um, just want to edit out a tripod. The ability to edit in a separate layer allow us to have a clean layers where we could use this as a transparent PNG file to import back in the video and just to cover off the tripod. So I'll quickly edit the tripod out here using the Photoshop 360 tools and once it's done we'll check out the layer and as you can see here's the layer that contained the edit for the tripod removal. So from here we can export this file out as a transparent PNG file and we can simply stack it on top of the video and since this is the exact same size and if we have a look at this video now actually I'll export it out and have a look at this video now you can see that it's basically masked out the tripod in your video so this is why it's extremely useful this doesn't work all the time and you see some issues when there's a change of lighting situation or if there's movement close to the tripod but overall this is a simple and effective way of masking out the tripod for videos so that's it from this video so thank you for everyone watching and please subscribe if you like what i'm doing hopefully this video has shown you the new 360 editing features within photoshop and it's great to see that adobe have up the ante with the 360 editing tools and hopefully affinity photo will follow suit and upgrade its features thank you again for watching please subscribe to our channel and we've got more videos coming out we've got more editing how to and tutorial as well as some hardware review that have just come in it's warren here from overexposed 360 and i'll catch you in the next video.